Welcome back to another study of God's Word. Uh, I don't know what you think about the beard. It's growing out a little bit. I've been telling you that since No Shave November to be watching this beard and see what it looks like. Hopefully by December I can uh, be Santa Claus for some of your families maybe. How about that? You see the Bible says that there's wisdom in a man's beard. It's like oil dripping down Aaron's beard. So this beard is makes me wiser and smarter. You know what I mean? Most of you are probably saying no. I got good news though. Maybe it's because of some of the oil that I've been putting in my beard. It got me a little uh, little zit right there this week. It's like the fountain of youth. You'd think that with all this blonde hair in my beard. <laughs> and this oil that I've been putting on it. That maybe with this new zit that I got, uh, makes me look like Benjamin Buttons. Can you see my youthfulness? How about that? A little bit of youth here. Anyway, we are in a lesson today about Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for so many things. God has really blessed my life in so many ways. I've told some of you this story before, but uh, you know, there were a, there was a time when I've had to sit down with all of my children and tell them about some of the things their father did that I'm not very happy about when I was younger. But I tell them all the time, and I still feel this way. It's like a it's a feeling that I have of just I am thankful. I'm thankful that by God's grace that He saved me. I'm thankful for His mercy and His kindness. And when I was telling my children about uh, my life. I tell them that they should be thankful because there's no telling where they would be in their lives without God's grace coming into my life. So what I want you to think about right now is what you can be thankful for. Now, it's going to be a stretch for some of you, I know, because when I was thinking about this lesson, especially for Thanksgiving, I'm like, Man, there's so much that we complain about right now. And, 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 you know, in some ways, rightfully so, we're in this pandemic. We have lockdowns, shutdowns, mask wearing, social distancing. Uh, you know, we worry about the economy. We worry about uh, leadership in our nation and all kinds of things that are going on. So a lot of our focus is on that. Maybe sometimes a lot of the negative in our lives because we just seems to be overwhelmed with it. But during this time, what can you be thankful for? You see, God's going to call us to, is calling us to a life of living with gratitude and thankfulness. So I want you to think about during this pandemic, what is it that you can be thankful for? And let me rephrase that. During this pandemic, there's probably a lot of things that you haven't gotten to do, that, that you uh, have uh, sacrificed for because of the good of, of, of all or maybe because of the, the, the pandemic in and of itself. You can't do some of the things that you could previously. So sometimes we need to think about that. We need to think about, okay, what is God telling me now in the midst of this trial in my life in the midst of this season what is it that when i come out of this when i come out of this that i need to be more grateful for and thankful for what are those things that as that you really miss that you haven't been able to do that you want to do hopefully prayerfully you know, this is more than just a day, like a, like a New Year's day. New Year's, we all get together. Most of you, I, I do. It's a tradition for me. I think about things I'm going to do in the new year, and I don't do them. <laughs> a lot of them I don't do. It's like every year I talk about losing weight, and I haven't done it in a while. But I'll tell you what, that's one of the things about this pandemic. Man, I'm ready for it to get over with so I can start working out some. I miss going to the gym bad. But that's what I'm thankful for is that I can go, is that those times that I could go to the gym. So when, I, when I'm out of this prayerfully, I'm going to start doing more, you know, getting more involved in and taking care of, of some of my health. So what are those things that you think about in your mind that you didn't get, that you've done 
but now you really miss them. I know for some of you, it's going to be church. Like you really miss going through those doors. You miss the fellowship. You miss the hugs. I know I do. I miss hugging people and just getting up in their faces and hearing the stories. And sometimes when I get excited and my spit's flying everywhere, people aren't like, oh, 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 social distance, six feet. You're like, oh, spit in my face. I keep talking. I, I, that's, I'm, I'm sure you probably won't, but the point is that, you know, just grabbing somebody and hugging them and just thank goodness this is over. Man, I can't wait for that. I can't wait to to just get out in public and, and just shake hands. You know, look, little things like shaking somebody's hand. So many of those little things that we, that we want to do, you know, maybe go on a pretty good vacation, uh, go somewhere, spend some time away. That's something that there's a couple of places, or some people that I'm going to meet hopefully in March that I've got planned. Hopefully this will all be over by then, but I've got some plans hopefully in March that I'll be able to do. But hopefully you do too. I, and that's what I want to encourage you to do today is think about, you know, what you could be, what you are thankful for and some of the things that you haven't, you've taken advantage of that you need to thank God that you can do that and that you will do some of those things in a thankful gratitude type of way. Here's something else to think about. Maybe there's somebody uh, that you're grateful for. Man, this is a great time. This holiday week, this Thanksgiving week, just send them a card. Tell them how thankful you are for them. Send them a private message. Tell them uh, to their face. Give them a phone call, something. Tell somebody that you're thankful for them. Maybe a family member. I know some of you are not going to be able to spend time with your families as you would have in the past. And, I, you know, and that's, that's just a, a very difficult thing. For a lot of families uh, during this time but you know maybe call some of them that you would normally see and just say you know what I, i'm so thankful for all the times we got to spend i I'm, I'm looking forward to to other times that we get to spend with each other you know just personally i want to tell you one of the things i'm thankful for is that well I've, i'm gonna get to do a wedding this weekend Corey and shelby we're gonna tie the knot with them too um and and you know reflecting upon that marriage for them this week i was like Man, you know how awesome it is in ministry when you're able to know a family and you know a kid and you see that. I just remember Corey as such a little kid with those glasses on, throwing that baseball everywhere he went and carrying around that, that wiffle ball bat or whatever. Uh, just seeing him in Bible class, watching him grow up, and now watching his progress from a little kid to the point where now he's, he's getting married. Uh, is, is these big life events to watch them in people's life uh, in ministry. That's a beautiful thing to watch, you know, watch kids be born, married, have children. To see that in individuals is special. And because of the relationships that we have with each other in our churches. So maybe there's somebody out there that you just want to be thankful for, and I hope that you do that. Sometimes it's difficult to be thankful when it's a very stressful or difficult time for you, maybe. But I want to say that we're going to read a psalm here. Psalm 100 is the psalm that I want to look at. But I want to give you some context to that psalm. I, I'm also going to try to look at First Corinthians, or First Chronicles chapter 16. Uh, it's one of David's Thanksgiving psalms there, too. But... I want you to think about David for a second. David was, has gone through a lot of tragedy, very difficult things in his life, his sinful life, also uh, the consequences of his sin, uh, you know, that, that God called him uh, to be king, but he was young, he struggled with, with Saul, and he struggled with his children, he struggled with, uh, you know, some of his own allies, and defeating some battles, winning some battles, that despite all of those things that happened to him in his life, David's life, David is still like, God, thank you, praise you for everything. It's a, it's a gratitude and a thankfulness that we should have. So let's look at Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Shout joyfully. To the Lord, all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. 
It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. Amen. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. This is just like a praise psalm. Shout joyfully to the Lord. Sing with gladness. That's one of the things that we can do in joy. And that's what the Bible tells us about, about being thankful is, is lifting our voices in song and praise. Man, I, I one of the things I love to do is when I wherever I'm traveling, I, I love to listen to worship music. Man, I could just praise God and sing out loud. I know my voice isn't the best, but I can still do it. I do it at church. I do it in my car. I love to sing out to God. Uh, and I know my voice is, is not meant to sing. <laughs> Some, I don't know. It's meant to sing. All of us are. It's, it's sing from our hearts to God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Uh, that's that's what we're called to do because we know that the Lord is good. The man that's one of the most important things for you to know is that the Lord is good. He's a good God, and just to know that not only is God so good, but we're we're not we're not God. We are we are created beings in the sheep of His pasture. So we praise God. We're thankful to God. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise to the one who made us. First Chronicles uh, chapter 16 and verse 8, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among all the people. God's deeds, God's grace, God's mercy, Christ on the cross, his resurrection, the, the, the life that he gave us, the breath that we breathe, those are all things that we need to give thanks to God for. Uh, sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of all of his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continuously. Remember his wonderful deeds, which he has done, his marvelous and his marvels and his judgments from his mouth. Praise God. Just that that's what these Psalms are talking about. Psalm 100, uh, uh, First Chronicles 16, and so many other Psalms of David. I was thinking of it like Psalm 95. Just praise God, sing to God, pray to God. Dwell on God. Meditate on Him. That's how we do it. We sing from the heart to Him. We, in our prayers, you, you know, in your prayers, in a conversation. This week I got to go hunting. Uh, man, and, and just absorbing all of God's creation. You can hear the birds sing, feel the breeze. You know, every time I see the wind blowing, I think of of, of the Holy Spirit, where Jesus talks about, you never know where it's coming or how it, where it's going, but it's there, and you just you just dwell on this spiritual things of God and absorb them in your life, and it just connects you to God in such a graceful way. And in prayer, in my conversations in the woods, I'm like, it it, it happens in here too, but it's just something about watching the sunrise and hearing the birds sing and watching, you know, all God's creation move it, it's like you can just feel the renewal the born again nature of god this renewal of a new day starting and, and, and you just in those conversations that i have with god i'm just thanking him and praising him uh, and just having a conversation with him and, and i just feel like you know he he's, he's talking to me and i and i can hear him and then i take this this is my little bible my pit minion I take this out in the woods with me, you know, because I don't want, I don't want electronics. I don't want cell phones. I don't want stuff going off. And I could just read the word and just absorb all of God's word in my life. I'm going to get into, I think next, next, next series is in studying the Bible, but uh, there's just so many things we can be thankful for. Be thankful for his works. Be thankful for God's grace. Like I said, for the cross of Christ, be thankful for redemption. Be thankful that we've got the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Be thankful for your sanctification. Think about where you were when you first came to Christ and where you are now. That spiritual journey. Be thankful to God for that journey. Be thankful to God for his word. Be thankful to God for church relationships. Be thankful for God that, that these fruits of the spirit that are in your life, that, that people can see them, see the joy, the patience, the love, your faith the peacefulness that you can have inside. We have that peace from God, peace from God. You know, that's something that you really need to take back and think about is like, I'm at peace. I thank God that I'm at peace. The reason I say that is, man, you know, in this, in this world that we're living in now, in this, in this chaos and, and pandemic and whatnot, there's a lot of people that don't have Christ in their life, and you can just see there. There's no peace. There's no peace of God for them. You know, it. it you just feel uh, very compassionate and compelled to want to share the gospel with people, and, and, and the best way that you know how, because we've been saved by the grace of God. I was reading this week, uh, Titus chapter three. It's like you've been bad. You you've done all these things, but. Uh, now that the kindness of God has appeared, he's, he's washed us, he's regenerated us. Uh, it's because of his grace, not the things that we've done, but because all of his mercy. So we need to be thankful for that, right? Be thankful for that. I'm going to end it with this. One thing to be thankful for. Mark my words. Be thankful that this, this world is not all there is. Be thankful that this is not the end. You have the gift of eternal life. Life forever with Jesus Christ our Lord. Where there is no suffering, there is no pain. Where we look forward to not only being in the joy of being in the presence of God and bowing in worship but also knowing that one day the fir first fruits of our of Christ's labor will be our resurrected bodies. I, look, what more can you be thankful for? And in all the things of the world, there's nothing. And, and I'm thankful for my wife, my kids, and all the different stuff, the material things that I have here. But nothing, nothing compares to what we all look forward to in the end. Because this is not the end. But while we're here in God's kingdom, let's just praise him. This week, just think about all the things that you can be thankful for. Praise God, give him thanks, and live a life of gratitude. And other people will see Christ's light shine in you. May God bless.